I just picked up the brand new iPad Air and I'm so excited because I want to show you my new editing workflow when working in Lightroom. What's going on guys, Stefan Lombardo here and today we're talking about my new editing workflow when working in Lightroom. For anybody who knows me, I've always been using Lightroom Classic to edit all my photos. I messed around with Lightroom Mobile a few times on my phone, but I've never been able to get the desired result I wanted or it doesn't even stand up to the Lightroom that I use on my computer. The reason why I picked up the iPad was because there was many times where I found myself away from home without my laptop or even right after a photo shoot where I wanted to edit those photos right away and I didn't have my laptop with me. Now I can do that with the iPad. So I picked out three photos of mine that I'm gonna edit with you on Lightroom to show you my workflow with the new iPad. Okay, so these are the three photos that I chose to edit on the iPad. We have a portrait and we got two urban street photos here. What we're gonna do is grab these three photos and drag them to our all synced photographs catalog here. After you've done that, you can see a cloud in the top right corner with a refreshing logo, just syncing those three photos to the iPad. After that's done, like mine is here, we can head into the iPad and start editing them. If you're working solely on the iPad, you can get yourself one of these USB-C hubs and make them in all sizes and forms. This one has an SD card slot, a micro SD card slot, a USB-C port, and three USB slots. This means that I can import photos from my SSD or even my SD card straight out of my camera. But for now, let's get into it. Okay, so we have our three photos that we imported from the computer here. We're gonna start off with this portrait of my friend Sarah. First thing we're gonna do is go into the light tab and we're just gonna play around with our highlights. We're gonna adjust our whites and our blacks to add some contrast and raise our shadows a little bit. And then we're gonna go into the tone curve and just add a little bit of contrast with a tone curve as well. Bring up our blacks a little bit, our shadows. And we're just going to go into the color tab here and we are going to make it a little bit warmer because it does come out cooler out of camera. And just like that. And then we're going to go into our color mix. And as you can see, there is a blue color cast on her shirt or on her sweater. And we're just going to get rid of that blue to make the sweater pure white. As you can see, if I turn it up, it's you can see the blue on there. And if I turn it right down, I desaturate the blue out of the sweater. I just want to adjust her skin tone just a little bit. A little bit more red. just to make it a little bit more natural. And then we're gonna go into our color grading tab and this is like our split toning. And we're just gonna add a little bit of greenish blue to the shadows. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of an orange or yellowish, a golden tone like the skin tone into the mid tones. And we're gonna do nothing with the highlights. I just wanna go back to the color mix and go into the greens and make the greens just a little bit more on the orange side or on the yellow side. And we're just gonna add a little bit of clarity. We're just gonna bump it up just a little bit and then add a little bit of vignette just to make our subject pop. Then we're going to go into the detail tab and we're going to add a lot of sharpening, but I don't like it applied to the entire photo. So we're going to add some masking and to see what you're doing with the masking, just tap on the screen or hold on the screen and you can see exactly what you're masking. And then this is our optics. So this is our uh, lens corrections here. We're not going to use it for this. I don't really like using it on portraits. And then our last thing we're gonna do is just crop it to Instagram. We're gonna use four by five. And we'll just click done. I actually really love this edit. I think it's better than the one that I did on the computer. And we'll head straight into our second photo and start editing that. First things first, we'll go into the light tab and we'll just bump up our shadows just to see what we're doing here. And I think I wanna add a preset onto this photo here. As you can see, I have my Stefano Lombardo V1 presets as well as my Ultimate Street V2 presets. If you guys haven't picked up these presets yet, they're available on my website, link in the description. And we're just gonna click through to find some that will go well with this photo. If you guys didn't know already, my Ultimate Street V2 preset pack is very dark and moody. So we're just gonna go through and find the one that looks best on it. 
and I think St. Clair is the best looking one. We'll click done and we'll just make some adjustments. As with every preset, you'll always have to make your adjustments uh, to the photo still. Uh, it's not a one click wonder and it'll make the photo better. You always have to make your adjustments after a preset. So we'll bump up our exposure here. And then we'll go into the color tab and we'll just warm up the photo a little bit to bring some color back in. And then we'll go into our color mix and we'll just bring back some of the oranges or the reds to bring back the taillights of the cars uh, back into the photo because it is a little bit desaturated and then we'll bring some blues back in. And we're not going to add any vignette. We're just going to straight into sharpening. We're going to add some sharpening to the photo. Again, we're going to mask it to just the buildings and the street. And we're just going to add a little bit of noise reduction because I can see some noise. It was shot later on at night. And we'll go into our optics tab and we'll just turn on lens corrections for the shot. And then the last thing I want to do is crop it four by five for Instagram. And we'll click done. I actually really love this edit. Here's a before and after. And we'll head straight into our third photo. I'm going to do exactly what I did in the other one. I'm going to bump up the shadows for this shot. And I think I have a preset that will go really well with this shot. It's from my ultimate street V2 preset pack and it will be called young. And as we turn it on, it makes a huge difference. It's very dark, very moody. I absolutely love it. We'll bump up the exposure just by a little bit. And then we raised our shadows as well. As I said, it is a very dark and moody preset pack. So we're gonna have to make these adjustments. We're gonna warm up the shot just by a little bit, bring some more orange into the shot. We're going to turn on lens corrections for this shot. We're going to go into the color mix tab and we're just going to go to the oranges and just tone the oranges down just by a little bit. And then we're going to go into our color greening tab and we're just going to play around with the color here in the shadows. And I think I like it right there. Maybe just a little bit more green. Last thing I want to do is add sharpening again with the masking. Make sure that just the buildings are sharpened. We're going to add our little bit of noise reduction because I can see a little bit of grain. It was shot at a higher ISO. And the last thing I want to do is just crop it again, four by five for Instagram, like the other photos. And I can see it's a little bit off. So we're just going to pinch the corner and adjust it to the building or the center of the photo is in the middle and then we're going to click done. I love this edit. Here's a before and after. Now I just want to show you one more thing you can do in the Lightroom mobile edition. If you head over to your healing brush and for example, we'll zoom into this pylon, adjust our size and we can actually remove the pylon like you would do in regular Lightroom or even in Photoshop. Now, for those of you who use Lightroom on the computer, you'll know that the Lightroom spot healing brush doesn't work all the time, but the Photoshop one does. So if you have the Photoshop app, you can head over here and click edit in Photoshop. And there we have it. All three photos edited on Lightroom mobile. Now you don't have to worry about transferring it or sending it over to your computer because it will automatically sync to your computer. As you can see, editing on the new iPad is very easy and it's actually pretty fun. Obviously, it doesn't have all the features of Lightroom Classic on the computer, but it does the job. With that being said, what device and program do you use to edit your photos? Leave it down in the comment section because I would love to know. If you guys like this video, make sure you click that like button, click that subscribe button, and click that bell to be notified when I post a new video. Peace.